Good morning. Good morning. There's Gemma and Gentry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi guys. Oh no. I need to check the volume. How are y'all doing? Good. I turn it up. Hi. Hi guys. Hey Jacob. Oh hey Lynn. Hi. Oh look, Jesse's tucking out of the way. <laughs> so we got Gemma, Gentry. I'm gonna write your names down for the name. Colton. Hi Chandler. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Everybody sounds a little sleepy. Does anybody know of anybody who went back to church this morning? Uh, we do, but they didn't go back to our church. They went back to a different church. Hmm. Yeah. So Lucas and Lucas and Lee. And Lee. Oh, hey. When I turn this way, I turn that way, and when I turn this way, I turn that way. <laughs> what you eating, Bracken? What? What you eating? The chocolate bar. No, this. The no bar. I ate for breakfast. I ate eggs too. We're gonna give everybody like two more minutes to log on. And then we're gonna start our game. Jacob, you're upside down, buddy. <laughs> Who's chatting? Yo. No! No! Oh, me. All righty. I have to be. Carly, did you get rained on the other day when you were outside playing? No? Carly, did you get rained on? No, no, I'm inside in time. Mom's been playing outside lately. What all you guys been doing outside? Playing hang the seats and all that. Ooh. We're playing baseball mm -hmm. and soccer. We like to play soccer around here. All right. Okay, so do I have everybody? If I got Carly, Grant, Maggie, Jacob. I'm not sure what you're talking about. All right, guys. We're going to start. I got an echo. All right. Do any of you guys have these at home? 
you know what these are? Uh, Monaco. We have colors. Right? So when I look in them, what happened? Far away. You can see that from far distance. Right. And if I look at you guys, you guys are like ginormous in my eyes. So I love binoculars. You can use them to see things up close that are actually far away. Or for example, I might see a tiny little speck on a mountainside in the distance. But if I take a close look with those things, I can see the speck is actually a grizzly bear or something. Yeah, those are some heavy duty ones that Eliza's got. All right, so it's pretty cool, right? So there are lots of things that we can use to help us see something better. Binoculars can help us see better. Microscope help us see better. We've got one. Of those. We don't have one. We've got telescope. Anybody got a telescope? No. No. Well, those can help you see out in space a little better, right? So, and they can, you have to do it during the night though, right? So, all those things help us to focus, right? They help us to take a closer look. So this month we're putting focus on something really important, but it's actually something you can't see. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's, I'm talking about faith, all right? Can anybody, does anybody wanna take a stab at what they think faith is or do you just want me to share it? <coughs> what is faith? Faith. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share it. So here we go. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see, right? So how can you do that? How can you trust in something you can't see? Well, it's simpler than you think. And we can start by taking a closer look. So to take kick things off today, I've got a fun game that I like to call microscope, telescope, or eyes. All right. So everybody's gonna play. I'm gonna put a blurry image up on the screen, and you're gonna think to yourself, what would you use? Just you just gotta try to guess. Would you use a telescope? Would you use a microscope? Or would you just use your plain old eyes? And then I'm gonna ask you, and then you're gonna get tell me what you say, and then I'm gonna reveal the answer, all right? Are you guys ready for your first image? Okay, here's our first image. So tell me, what would you use to try to figure out this blurry image at the top of your screen? Naomi, tell me what you would use. A microscope. Naomi's going microscope. Rebecca, what would you use? Um, Either microscope, telescope, or your eyes. Microscope. Let me see. Let's go microscope. Ruben? No. Microscope, or eyes. Let's put this down so it's just. Hey, that's a gem. Gem and gentry. Okay, Ruben's going eyes. Just Demma and Gentry, I what would you use? Microscope. Microscope. Gemma, we can't use the microscope right now. Okay, so Gemma would use a microscope. What would you use, Gentry? I'll just use my eyes because how would you do it with a microscope? Because you would have to put this, the, a slide under the microscope. Okay, hold on. We'll come, we'll come back to that. Eliza, what would you use? A microscope because we think... It's a germ. Okay, and Colton, are you going microscope too? Yeah. Okay, Lainey, what are you going? Microscope. He's going microscope. Bracken, what are you doing? Nice. Just pick one, microscope, telescope, or eyes? Telescope. Okay, he's going telescope. Jacob, where are you going? <laughs> Carly, what are you doing? Microscope, telescope, or eyes? Microscope. Microscope. 
Okay, Grant and Maggie, what are you doing? I can't hear you. Speak up. Yell really loud. So you said microscope? Yeah. Maggie, you too? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to reveal the answer. It's an amoeba. You would use your microscope, right? You would <laughs> You'd put it on a little slide here, and then you would look in this microscope. <coughs> so now we got an idea of what it's like. So, so is it? It's, uh, I'm not exactly sure what an amoeba is. That sounds about right. <laughs> Jesse, do you know what amoeba is? Is she in there, Bracken? Yeah, it's right. a microscopic organism. Okay, it's an organism. There you go. All right, next one. What would you use? Naomi's own telescope. Ruben? Telescope. Telescope. Is everybody going telescope? Yeah. Lainey, you go in telescope? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Telescope. All right. It looks like all of you shaking your head yes, like you're doing telescopes. Yeah. Here we go. You know what? It's a planet. You all are right. It is Venus. It's Saturn. Yeah, that's Saturn. All right. Yes. You would use this telescope right here to try to find Saturn, right? All right, next one. Um, uh, Naomi's going microscope. 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 Now, I microscope. do think that it's a germ. Or inside of your body. How about you, Bracken? Microscope. Okay, Grant and Maggie. Microscope. Eliza and Colton. Microscope. We think, yeah, microscope. Okay. Yes, we think. All right, Carly, what are you doing? Microscope. Lainey? Microscope. All right, let's look. They're blood platelets. Yes, you would use. You are right, because they're blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's in your. Hey, Miss Nikki. Yeah. You, me, me and Colton thought that someone is actually testing blood when they. On this one, they could be, yeah. Before right, you said one. that, what would you use? Microscope, telescope, or eyes? Telescope. Telescope. That's a plan. Eyes. Okay, I got. It. The one that you just said. Eyes. Eyes. Okay, Ruben's going eyes. Naomi's going oh. telescope. What are you going? Eyes. Hold on. What eyes. Yeah. Gentry and Gem, what are you doing? Eyes. Okay, Gentry and Gemma are going eyes. Um, Colton and Eliza, what are you going? Eyes. Eyes. Okay. All right, Bracken, what are you doing? Eyes. Eyes, yep. And Grant and Maggie, what are you doing? Eyes. Eyes. All right, Lainey, what are you doing? Eyes. She's going eyes too. How about Carly? What do you think? You think a microscope? All right, here's the answer. They're pancakes. You like your side. I think this is our last one. Are you ready? There we go. Okay. Uh, telescope. 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 Yeah. It looks like a play. All right, Gemma and Gentry, what are you doing? Telescope. Okay, Eliza and Colton, what are you doing? Eyes. They're eating their eyes. All right, Bracken, what are you using? Telescope. You want a telescope? All right, Grant and Maggie, what are you using? All 
right. Carly, what are you using? Eyes. Eyes. All right. And Lainey, what are you using? Telescope. Telescope. All right. Reveal the answer. It's your eyes. <laughs> All right, guys. That was a good one. So I'm going to tally up the points. like most of you got four. Oh no, Colton and Eliza got five. Looks like Colton and Eliza and Grant and Maggie all got five. Way to go guys, way to use those eyeballs. All right, that was fun. Really had to kind of think like what, on, what is this, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna have pop on. Where's Grant and Maggie? Can you get your mom and dad? Or your mom? Sorry. Nikki, will we be doing a Kahoot today? Yes, later. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. See, we can, we're like having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, you may need to get closer. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. All right. I'm so happy to be here today to talk to you about faith. Faith is so important. Faith changes the way we live our lives, the way we think about others, and the way we think about God, and the way we treat others. So, I don't have any binoculars today, but we're going to pretend. Okay. Faith is sort of like binoculars, and we can look through to see everything in our life. It helps us make sense of things and know what to do when things get hard. Our faith reminds us that we can trust God no matter what. So, listen to these words from chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. You see, faith is all about believing in things you can't see because of what you can see. We can't see God, but we can read about people who came before us who followed God. These were the men and women who faced tough times, just like you and I did. People who were hurting, scared, and sometimes overwhelmed. But they chose to follow God. They chose to trust His promise that He would one day send a rescuer. And that rescuer was Jesus. The writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us about some of these people who we've met so far in God's big story. Like Noah and Abraham. Take Abraham for example. Abraham was old, like really old. And it didn't seem like he and his wife Sarah would ever have any kids. But then God stepped in with a promise. God told Abraham to leave his country and his people, to leave his family and to go to the land that God would show him. God promised him all of the nations of the earth would be blessed because of Abraham. You see, God was planning to send his rescuer so he could prove from Abraham's family. Abraham had God promise that he didn't fully see the way God promised would come true. Still, Abraham had the faith to trust God. He left his home and his people and he followed God's call. Eventually, Abraham's son Isaac, his grandson Jacob, and his great grandson Joseph all chose to put their faith in God. Just like Abraham, they believed that God keeps his promises. Another great example of Moses is Moses. 
Like Abraham, Moses was called to God to do something rather extraordinary, something that he didn't feel like he was ready to do. And in the moment, he couldn't really see how it would all work out. But just like Abraham, Moses chose to put his faith in God. See, Moses was an Israelite, one of God's people, but he had been raised in Pharaoh's palace. Pharaoh was the leader of Egypt, and he had forced the Israelite people to work his place. One day, God called Moses from a burning bush and told Moses to lead his people out of slavery. Moses wasn't sure he was the man for the job, but in the end, he chose to stand with his own people against Pharaoh. Sure enough, God used Moses to lead his people to freedom. And that's not all. When you read the book of Hebrews, you discover a huge list of people who all follow God by faith. The list goes on so long that the writer eventually stops naming them all. One name that we can't forget to mention is Israel's greatest king, King David. David knew that God had chosen him to be the king of God's people. But years passed, and it hadn't happened yet. To make matters worse, the current king, King Saul, wanted to kill him. David spent years of his life on the run from King Saul. That must have been really hard for him. But David, with his faith in God, even though David didn't totally see how things were going to work out, he chose to trust God. He had faith that God would keep his promise. Eventually, God did, and David became a great king. None of these people from the Old Testament could see with their eyes God, how God was going to save his people. Then they chose to trust God and to believe that he would keep his promises. They believed that God had a greater plan. They chose faith. But listen to how the writer of Hebrews said, All these people were praised because they had faith. But none of them received what God had promised. That's because God had planned something better for us. God had something better planned for all of us. His big story has been taking shape all the way from creation until now. And God did send us rescuer at just the right time. He sent his son Jesus to be our Savior. Jesus showed us what God is like. He even told us the most important thing we can do is to love God and to love others. Jesus came to earth to show us the way. When Jesus was killed, his friends and followers thought the story was finished. But God made everything clear when he raised Jesus back to life. Now we can trust that anyone who believes and follows Jesus has the promise of eternal life. That's what it means to have faith. We can believe and put our faith in Jesus even though we've never seen him with our own eyes. The earlier followers of Jesus, like Peter and John, showed us what faith looked like. They saw Jesus eat and heal. They saw him after God raised him back to life. Eventually, Jesus returned to heaven and they couldn't see him anymore. But they didn't stop believing. They continued to follow Jesus and they continued to live by faith. These early Christians believed in what they couldn't see. They knew they were a part of God's big story. Even though they couldn't see the ending where God had made everything right. We can choose to believe just like they did. We can believe like the people in the Old Testament did. We can follow Jesus even though we can't see him. We can choose faith. So remember, your bottom line, you can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. It's true. You may not be able to see Jesus with your eyes, but you can see how he loves and helps you. You can see how people have faith in him in hard times because they put his trust in him. You can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many examples of people throughout history who choose to put their faith in you. They didn't always see how it would work out, but they choose to trust you. Thank you for reminding us today that we can trust you and in your promises, even though we don't see how they're going to work out. Help us to remember when it's hard, when it's still we feel frustrated or afraid, that we can trust you and put our faith in you. We love you and we pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So God's story is so big. And this right here is just some of the key stories in his big story, right? It's amazing to look back at all the people who believed in God and put their faith in him. People like Abraham, Moses, and David, 
They trusted in what they couldn't see. They believed that God is faithful. They believe that God would keep his promises. They believe that it's always worth it to follow his plan. Remember, faith is being sure of what we don't see. And that's what it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1 today, and which is actually our memory verse this month. And I don't know if we want to do a memory verse challenge again this month like we did last time. Look, Maggie's like, no, let's not. <laughs> This one's not too bad. All right. Our memory verse this month is faith is being sure of, of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. And that's Hebrews 11, 1. We can have faith in Jesus, even though we can't see him. Not only can we read about who Jesus is and what he's done, but we can also look to others who follow Jesus too. So when you know how he has worked in other people's lives, you can see how he can work in your life too. The truth is there will be times in our lives when we feel like we can't see and we just don't know what's going on. And there will be things that we just don't understand. There will be times that we aren't sure how it will work out. But through all of this, guys, we can trust Jesus and choose to have faith because he's always going to be there, right? So remember, you can know Jesus even though you never see him. You might wonder where to start with all of this. Where do you start to put your faith in Jesus? Well, you can talk to someone who does follow Jesus and trust in him, like maybe your parents or someone else in your family or someone at church, like your small group leaders or Carol or I or somebody that you know that follows Jesus. You can ask them how they put their faith in Jesus. And you can also read the stories of the men and women in the Bible who chose to trust in Jesus. So when you see and hear how others have put their faith in Jesus, it can also help you do the same thing, right? So, all right, I'm going to unmute you all. Unmute, unmute. If you have an extra device, Miss Welty has... Hey, Nikki. How are you? Peachy. Missed you the other day. <laughs> I know. Sorry. All right. I did get Steph and Ashley yesterday, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, you saw them, but not me. All right. So if you have your other device, we're going to play Kahoot. Have you ever played Kahoot, Lainey? Well, see if your mom will give you her phone and go to Kahoot.it. Nikki, how do I make the other one host? Um, I got distracted. Is it, is it, is it the little W? Yeah, the one with no picture. Okay. Miss Nikki, what's the game pin? Hold on, Bob. <laughs> got it, Courtney? Okay, well, never done this either, so. Hey, Lainey. Five, three. You probably played Kahoot at school before, haven't you? It's either. What do you want to do? So the game pin is zero one five. Naomi, you were in charge last week. No, that was Rebecca. She was just pushing the thing. <laughs> Rebecca is Nikki rigging it so she wins. Oh. <laughs> like she said, no. She is, isn't she, Rebecca? Miss Nikki's rigging it. <laughs> G -S. It's G. Gentry and Gemma. Is that the G's? Yeah. I like it. Is that everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But, yeah, you need to get up here. Maggie, are you in? Right here. Oh, you were the first one in. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. 
White. Jake, are you in? Jacob's frozen. <laughs> I, I haven't heard from him, so I want to say that his thing got frozen. Okay. Okay. I'm going. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer. <laughs> what are we talking about this month? <laughs> Summer, Faith, Miss Nikki, and Miss Carol, or love? <laughs> and every single question has this word in it, so hopefully we all get it. Yeah, faith. Thank goodness. Good job, guys. Grant in the lead. How did Abraham have faith? <laughs> he planted stuff. He jumped over the moon. He was really old and he had kids or he cried a lot. How did Abraham have faith? I mean, the picture should give you a little bit of a clue there if you don't know. <laughs> Bracken said, that doesn't give me any kind of a clue. Look at it. It's Look a... It, Bracken. Right. <laughs> That's like a great grandpa holding a baby. Come on. He was really old, but he had kids. Remember, I told him to have faith. And then his grandson was Jacob, right, Nikki? Uh, yeah. Grant in the lead. How did Moses have faith? He led his people to freedom. He went to Walmart without a mask. He ate raw cookies. Or he talked to Miss Nikki before she had her coffee. How did Moses have faith? These are some awesome questions. <laughs> I try. Yeah, he led his people to freedom. Good job. I wanted somebody to put, he talked to Miss Nikki before she had her coffee. Bring it still in the lead. Hutch fam in a close second. How did David have faith? He walked on water. He multiplied the bread and the fish. He joined a Zoom meeting with God or he trusted God and became a king. I think so. Right. Push that one. Use the picture for a clue. He joined a Zoom meeting with God. Good job. He trusted God and finally became a king. One more question. How can we have faith? Do we love God? Do we keep believing? Do we love others? Do we put our faith in Jesus? Hmm. Hmm. I didn't read all of them. I think you got it right. Hmm. Rebecca got a little jumpy. They were all right. We could love God or others. We could keep believing and we could put our faith in Jesus. Gotcha. I made Naomi freak out a little bit, didn't I? Okay, let's see. In third place, Maggie. Good job, Maggie. In second place, the Hutch Bam. And in first place, I know Grant. Good job. Grant, will you say it? How do you say it? That's really good. Good job, guys. It's so good to see you this week, by the way. Well, I didn't get to see Jim and Gentry, but hopefully you got your stuff. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. I wanted to color, too, so I started coloring mine. <laughs> yeah, I already I already both of ours. I already finished all of it. All both of them. Hey, Bracken, do, like, do you like your little doggy one? Look, Miss Nikki asked if you like the doggy one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you guys, do you want to do a memory verse challenge this month or not? No. No. Well, there's a chance that Miss Nikki can get slimed, y'all. Come on. All you have to do is oh. 
<laughs> if there's a chance that Miss Nikki can get slumped. Look, they're not that hardcore about it, so I shouldn't push my luck. So, all right, we won't do on this one. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we'll see you later. Thanks for hopping on, Lainey. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Peace.